So Bonnie, if you want to uh, mute everybody and start uh, recording, we'll we'll get going. You need to unmute yourself, Jim. My audio. Okay. How's that? <clears throat> Good. That's working. Great. Okay, so uh, tonight is the final uh, uh, unit uh, of when things go wrong. Uh, basically, what what uh, the, the 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 basic operation, hopefully the basic operational uh, things that, that the PRO and the DRO uh, should be doing. Um, this this unit is primarily for the the PRO and the the DRO and, and boat drivers. Uh, but if you're not uh, in that category, you'll still uh, get some benefit out of knowing what is supposed to be happening out there when, when we have issues. One of the uh, key things about when things go wrong is that uh, they're, never the, they're never the same and circumstances uh, quickly overcome any uh, plans or ideas that you may have about what to do. So, we're, I've divided the evening up into um, uh, three different sections where we'll have uh, an opportunity for discussion after each of the, the, the basic uh, pieces um, that, that we're going to talk about. So we'll have um, some discussion about medical issues and our SSA safety plan. Um, another one when we talk about uh, damaged boat and dealing with rescue authorities, um, a piece on weather, and then finally a, a miscellaneous uh, section where put the, a few things that didn't seem to fit into the other categories. Um, I want to say start by saying this is not a first aid or a CPR course. Uh, we hope that um, all SSA members will. Um, be reasonably proficient in first aid and, and take a CPR course. It's a very good thing, even if you're not an SSA member. And your fellow members and racers may depend, uh, their life may depend at some point on you having done this and you'll never know until after it's over whether or not you should have done it or not. Basically, we have all of the tools and equipment for to cover medical emergencies um, on uh, the various boats. Um, and uh, there is a, a good uh, first aid kit um, on each boat. And there is a backboard on the Parker 23 um, that is typically a, a mobile boat out in the, the water if we, if we need uh, to have that piece of equipment. Um, on each uh, boat there, are, we have in the club, excuse me, we have one automated uh, defibrillator, uh, an AED, um, and the key word here is automated. Uh, you do not have to be um, CPR certified uh, to, to operate this, this device. There is a good YouTube video that's posted here where you can go and look at um, how the machine works. The critical thing is when you're stocking the, the boat at the beginning of the, of the day, the AED needs to be on one of the non-anchored mark boats, either the Edgar D or the Hugh E, and it should never be put on a rib um, uh, or, the anchor, or an anchored uh, boat um, because the, we're depending on the non-anchored boat to essentially drive to the, the place if they're not the, the actual beginning point of, of an emergency, they, they need to quickly get to that, that point if that's the kind of thing that the medical issue that we have. Uh, when you open up the AED, there is this uh, yellow and black uh, device. In the middle of it, there is a green button uh, that you can see in the center photograph. And you just push that button and somebody will start talking to you and talk you completely through the process of, of how to um, operate this. In the bottom of the box is a pair of scissors, um, which we learned when you have a, someone who's, who's got a lot of heavy foul weather gear on, you need to get that off them quickly. 
in order to operate this thing. Um, and so just take that scissors and start hacking away uh, at their foul weather gear and get, get, get down to bare skin that you need to be at in order to operate the AED. So the basic uh, the checklist of, of things, obviously, uh, you, need, you need to start with uh, making sure that they're breathing uh, the, uh, and the airways are free of, of uh, blockage. If they're not breathing, um, after that, you need to start CPR. Uh, and then finally, uh, the circulation they, they need. Um, uh, you need to stop any, any bleeding that's happening. And if their heart is uh, not, if it's a heart issue, you need to get the, the AED out. Then you begin to focus in on the um, other major things that happen out in the water, um, hypothermia, um, broken bones, uh, heat strokes and concussions uh, are the main uh, issues that we are, are likely to uh, uh, come up with. Um, the, the Commodore's message in the essay this month has a, a nice little link to a, an article in the Practical Sailor uh, on um, hypothermia, uh, which is a, a short read and, and worth uh, anyone who's going to be out on the water to uh, uh, at least read through that if it was a really good article. So the, probably the most difficult of the situations is if you have an unconscious or injured person um, in the water. Uh, and obviously the very first uh, part of the process is getting that victim out of the water. Uh, that person in foul weather gear, boots on, is going to be extremely heavy. You're going, you may, you, one person or even two people are not likely to be able to um, drag this person out of the water unless they're you know, really strong and well built. Uh, you want to move all your crew to the, the, the same side of the boat um, at the, the lowest point in the boat to reduce the amount that you have to lift that person out of the water and whatever you have to do to drag them out um, and get them stable as quickly as possible and then begin your um, first aid and CPR or whatever you need to do. Uh, in, in this issue and all of the issues uh, that we're dealing with, wind, sea state, the type of boat that you're dealing with, the available people uh, to assist will all impact uh, the decisions that you as the boat driver or the person who's taking charge um, will make on any uh, rescues um, on, on the water. If need be, uh, you, you should uh, plan on recruiting competitors, um, whatever, you, whatever you need to do uh, at that point to, to make the proper procedure uh, to get that person out of the water and uh, uh, in a safe condition. Uh, in each of the orange boxes on, on each of the boats that we, uh, we have, there is an emergency uh, response card, uh, which this is a, a, a picture of, which has all of the emergency numbers um, and the basic uh, uh, checklist of things that you need, need to do uh, as you're, you're working through the, the process. As a boat driver or PRO, DRO, you should have read this uh, before you leave the dock. Um, and certainly at the beginning of the year, become familiar with it. The most critical thing on here is that uh, only uh, the only number you need to, to reach out to is 911. Uh, the uh, 911 people have said that they want to control uh, uh, calling uh, in additional assets, uh, Coast Guard, fire, harbor master, uh, whatever it is that, that you need, ambulance. Uh, so 911 will be the coordinator for that. Typically, the PRO is the person who makes the decision to call 911. Uh, and most often, the PRO will be the person that actually calls 911. But if you have an injured person and that person is not on the boat that the PRO is on, uh, the person in, 
in charge of communications on the boat where the victim is, is the best person to call 911 because the uh, 911 people are, are going to be very interested in asking a lot of questions about that injured person. And you it really needs to be a person who is um, right there on the boat with the injured person who can answer these questions. Uh, critical to uh, each of these different um, uh, when things go wrong uh, issues is communication. Uh, and so we need uh, your cell phones to be charged because if you, start, if you need them, they're, you're, you're going to use a lot of power. Uh, if you're, say, on, on the, um, the Parker 21 and you're the, the person where the, the emergency um, is happening, the boat driver should probably not be the person who calls 911. You should designate somebody on your boat to be the communications person because uh, the boat driver is probably going to have uh, too many other things to be stopping and, and talking to. Uh, the, the rescue people that are going to be, begin to get mobilized. Uh, so uh, make sure that you, you if you're the boat driver, uh, you have delegated that, um, uh, that uh, task to somebody else um, on, your, on your boat. In uh, cases of emergency, uh, medical emergencies, uh, you will at some point have to transfer, you're going to be transferring that person to uh, an ambulance to the EMT team. Again, that will be coordinated through 911. You'll be talking to them. Uh, at this point in the season, um, the designated drop off point for SSA boats uh, is SSA. Uh, and, uh, but the, the person on 911 will te be telling you where to go. And it, you should tell them that you're, you're an SSA boat, uh, um, but they, they may say, no, we, we want you to go somewhere else. Uh, so it's very important to, to not assume that you're going to end up as this little diagram uh, shows. Uh, when you're heading into shore, it's important to consider the, uh, the state of the, the, the situation of the victim uh, who's laying in the boat. Um, if time is of the essence, meaning a heart attack, hypothermia, or heat stroke, uh, you can go um, as fast as you need to go. Um, but if you have a traumatic injury, such as broken bones or a concussion, you probably don't want to shake that person up in the boat. And time in those, condition, those kinds of injuries is not of the essence. And you may want to go in um, slow enough so you're not shaking the boat. Uh, especially in, if you have rough seas or uh, conditions that are going to um, have, have the boat move um, a lot. There are actually uh, four other places in town that are designated by EMT as possible uh, landing points uh, that they can direct boats to. Um, uh, Annapolis, the foot of Fifth Street, uh, right by Annapolis Yacht Club, um, the docks at Eastport Yacht Club, City Dock, and the Naval Academy um, are all designated uh, spots. Uh, and you, you might be, you may be sent to one of those places depending on weather, um, uh, traffic in the city, uh, what, whatever the, the EMT people think is their, their best route to get to you. So be, be aware you may be sent to someplace else. So that is the, the, the really short and dirty um, uh, safety plan that, that we have uh, when, when we have medical emergencies. Um, so we're going to take um, a few minutes and ask for questions. Um, or uh, if we have people uh, who are on the call that are uh, specialists in EMT, uh, we, would, we would appreciate uh, additional uh, thoughts uh, uh, that we can share uh, with people. Hi, Jim. Hi. One thing you kind of covered, but um, you said is you know talk to the EMT, but you should never hang up first. That's something I've always taught. You never let them hang up first. So they might have more questions. They may be pausing, but the, the most important thing is let them hang up first. And you pretty much covered that. But just to 
an FYI. Yeah. And the second thing, well, those um, those diagrams or the um, spaces for the other dockage be posted somewhere on the boat. Like a, a uh, the yeah. the list. Of, let me go back. This this list um, mm -hmm. of where where those places are with this map is actually on. Uh, I believe it's either a separate page in the uh, safety plan. Okay. Um, or maybe on the back side of, of the other sheet that I showed just before that. I don't know how it got printed, but okay. uh, right. that, that diagram is supposed to be in the, the box. Okay, thank you. That's all. Uh, <clears throat> Jim, my, my wife used to work at Jug Bay Wetland Sanctuary and they had an uh, incident I believe it was last fall where um, someone in a kayak by himself got in trouble, um, got the, the kayak turned over. He tried to walk out, but he was in the mud flats and he ended up getting hypothermia. And I read the report of that and there was a, uh, a mention of something I'd never heard before and that's the 120 degree rule. Uh, which is the sum of the water temperature plus the air temperature. And um, if it's below that, you really have to be concerned about hypothermia. Um, it, that seems a little bit uh, low for me, having been in water uh, 60 degrees, um, e even in air that's 70, um, that, that's still uh, you know, pretty, pretty darn cold. But um, it's something we should be aware of, I think, uh, as, uh, you know, people on the race committee, if, if the water temperature is cold, which it is now, um, SSA does have a requirement to wear wetsuits or some protective uh, kind of uh, gear. Um, but once, you know, once you pass that threshold, which I think is 60 degrees, I don't remember from the sailing instructions, but once you pass that threshold, there's still a, a strong possibility of hypothermia uh, if, if uh, the, the water temperature is just slightly above 60 and the air temperature is, is low as well. Uh, in, in that um, article uh, that I, I mentioned that, that uh, uh, Commodore uh, had in his, this week's S, uh, the essay, uh, was that a life jacket uh, as your first line of defense is really important. Uh, it will keep your head, uh, you know, keep you up um, uh, because you, you have to keep your head above water. And so, and also a, a, um, a, a, life, a life jacket that is really a vest will also help keep you warm. Um, a lot warmer than those inflatable vests. Uh, an inflatable life jacket, so, you know, self-inflating will keep you up, but it's not going to do much to uh, keep you warm. Uh, so we keep keep remembering that it could be a seventy-degree day uh, on the uh, uh, you know at, at the in the parking lot, uh, but the water temperature could be I don't know what it is now, but it's I think it's in the low fifties. Uh, it's it's very cold um, out there. Uh, and so we, you know, we, need, we need in our skippers meetings until the water warms up to really uh, push hard for competitors to wear um, the right safety gear uh, that, that they need. It's their responsibility to, to do it, but uh, we, we need to keep pushing uh, for them. And early season regattas might be a good time for the PRO to put up the uh, you know, mandatory life jacket uh, a flag. Um, uh, to make sure that everybody's got a life jacket uh, on. Any other? Jim, the question is, um, what about emergency on non-SSA boats? Okay, yeah. Keep remembering that, you know, we're out there with, with our assets. Um, if there is a boat that gets in trouble um, and we're the closest, um, uh, asset or, or a reasonable asset to respond, we should be doing so. Um, the loss of this law of the sea always prevails, um, and don't don't be shy about calling the PRO and say I've got I've got a boat that went over 
here, I've got a, whatever the emergency is, um, I'm, I'm going over to help um, and uh, just inform the PRO what's going on uh, and, and move into action as a, as a helper. Uh, and the Good Samaritan um, laws in Maryland will protect us uh, from becoming involved in a, a situation where we're trying to save someone's life. <clears throat> okay, the second uh, thing that happens is that uh, boats break, uh, they crash into each other, um, wind uh, capsizes boats, and we now we may not have a, a medical emergency, but we do have a, a, a boat in trouble emergency. Uh, and for uh, for the, our, our racing boats, uh, it may, may mean that that boat cannot sail into the, the back to SSA by itself. Uh, if that's the case, you need to stabilize that boat with its anchor um, and then uh, put the crew uh, from that boat, if, if they want to go um, uh, onto your boat or take them down to the, the, the main committee boat. Uh, but we, we shouldn't be thinking that we have to bring, bring that boat back to the dock uh, uh, in the middle of the racing. Um, if the boat is actually sinking, then you're going to have to make decisions about what, what needs to be done um, to rescue both crew and uh, do what we can to stabilize uh, the boat. It's a, a pretty broad spectrum of, of situations and so we, we depend on our members who are good sailors and lots of experience on the water to make make decisions as the uh, situation unfolds and don't again don't be shy about asking your competitors uh, to help uh, that, that takes precedence over over racing um, if necessary At some point, you may feel like you need uh, more help than, than, than we have. Uh, and when you call for help in this town, generally, you're going to get way more assets than, than you care to even think about. Uh, uh, nine, you're going to do that by calling 911. Um, and you're going to get the, the, at least uh, the Coast Guard, DNR, and probably the Harbor Master. Uh, you and, and any other assets that, that may be out there. Uh, I, I've seen it when, when, these, when they, this group shows up, they show up in force. Uh, so be, um, uh, be, be prepared You're to, and you, you will be a central uh, uh, figure in the coordination of that. If, for example, we have somebody who's lost overboard and we're beginning search and rescue. Uh, we, uh, you know, we, we may need to be talking um, through 911 um, to the, the assets that, that are arriving. Um, and this may be a situation where somebody else, not a non-SSA racer, uh, a man overboard, lost, we're, we need uh, to find that person. Uh, again, SSA assets should uh, come into play. Uh, to begin to search for a person who's overboard and, and we can't find them. Uh, but again, everything will be funneled through 911 as your, your uh, coordinator. Um, uh, they may uh, pass you on to uh, an on the water person, but uh, you let them make th that call. We've also got the issue of the Good Samaritan calling 911. Um, I've seen this twice uh, in the last couple of years uh, where a, a sailboat capsizes, um, see, appears to be in trouble, may, may not actually be in trouble. Um, and people, we've got a lot of shoreline, Naval Academy, uh, City Dock, um, the various marinas uh, or other boats on the water that may see something happen and they will call 911. Uh, and you're going to get a huge amount of assets that suddenly you know materialize looking for this problem um, which may just be you know a couple of your racing boats capsized um, they're back up they're even still racing but you now have this uh, armada of, of boats that are out there you know trying to help you um, we are 
uh, we're encouraging, we now have two radios on each of our main uh, race committee boats. And one of those should always be monitoring channel 16. Uh, and when this kind of Good Samaritan call or whatever uh, begins to happen, there'll be a lot of chatter on uh, channel 16. Um, it would be good for you to understand it's happening. And you may say, uh, you aren't coming to help us, are you? Uh, you know, communicate them, to them where you are, uh, what your situation is. And if you don't really have any issues, uh, it would be good um, to tell the, the, the rescue group that's assembling uh, that you know, we're, we're fine. Um, they may, you may actually get impressed looking uh, to help uh, with another situation, but um, if we don't have a, a, a situation that requires rescue uh, or assets, we, we need to tell them as, as soon as we're aware that we think this is, is happening. So uh, any uh, discussion on, um, uh, calling uh, for our, our local authorities who are in the, the, the search and rescue business. Hi, Jim. Sorry, me again. <laughs> I just did this for so long. Um, about the Good Samaritan law, people are always afraid they might do something wrong, um, but under the Good Samaritan law, nobody can be prosecuted or sued because they attempted to save a life. And I don't know if that makes any sense here, but some people get scared and run off just so. Yeah, yeah well, it's, important, it's important for us to keep remembering that uh, that, that, that law does exist in Maryland. Um, so if, if you need to help someone, uh, don't worry about the fact that you, you, know, you may damage their boat uh, in trying to uh, um, get a, come alongside or whatever it is that you're doing that, that needs to be done. Um, uh, you certainly need to be reasonable about communicating uh, to the, 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 the boat or person that you're, you're, you're working with. Uh, a person who's hypothermic in the water may not even want to help you rescue them. They may not even realize they're in trouble. Uh, and uh, uh, so it's, uh, but, but we still should be there um, and do, doing what, what makes sense uh, to do at the time. Any other thoughts? Okay, we'll move along. All right, the next uh, conditions is, is weather. Uh, I think that we're all uh, fortunately uh, tied to our cell phones. Uh, they're a really good device. Uh, we should be keeping our weather eye out uh, for developing cells, but we, sh we should, before um, you go out uh, as a boat driver of DRO, PRO, of course, you should be doing good due diligence on what kind of weather you're expecting. And we, we now have very good assets uh, um, in the web world, uh, weather.gov, um, an app called Storm Shield. Uh, that you can put on your phone. Uh, it would be good for you to download those at this time of the year and, and use it uh, uh, enough so you understand how, how they work. Uh, these apps, are, uh, the, the radar on these apps can be better uh, and more detailed than the, the, the radar you're going to get on weather.com. Uh, it's important as we're proceeding through the day uh, if you're on one of the mark, if you're on one of the mark boats or not not on the main committee boat, you should be monitoring the weather, just as the, the hopefully the, the signal boat is. But the signal boat often is busy doing a lot of things, and they don't may not have the time uh, to monitor the weather as much as you would if you were on one of the uh, the, the other mark boats. And so it would be good for you to, to keep a, uh, a really strong weather eye out. Plus, in, in some of our race course areas, uh, the weather mark boat may be in a much better position to see um, how uh, uh, fronts are, are moving, um, what clouds, what's happening with clouds than the, uh, than the, the signal boat. And so you should be keeping 
that that eye out uh, for you for what, what you're seeing. A really important uh, thing for the PRO is that we we need to give the fleet time to get back to the dock before the storm starts. Uh, having boats try to land it at the beginning of, of a front coming in uh, is, is difficult and dangerous, especially with, uh, with our position at SSA. Uh, the storm uh, wind direction is typically out of the, the west, uh, south, southwest or northwest. As the front comes through, um, driving boats right onto our docks is really difficult to land a, a some of our racing boats in, into our quays in those kinds of wind conditions. So if you're going to pull the plug and send the fleet in, uh, you really need to do that with enough time uh, to avoid um, having boats come in um, in the middle or at the very beginning of the storm, which is usually the most difficult uh, time. The PRO has full authority to uh, require life jackets um, uh, and the co code flag Yankee with one sign. Uh, and the PRO can also uh, can tell the race committee that they have to wear life jackets. Uh, and we are, we have, we continue uh, to encourage members to bring their own life jackets because those are the ones that are gonna fit the best. They'll be most comfortable uh, with them. Uh, but all of our boats are, are stocked with uh, these type one uh, orange necky. And if you're the PRO or, or the boat driver and, and you, need, you need to tell your crew to, to wear life jackets and they don't have one, they will wear this orange jacket. It's really critical. Uh, as the, the, the front line of, of any safety is, is your life jacket. So if you're going to send the fleet in, it might be good to raise code flag Yankee um, as you're doing that, even if the wind isn't all that uh, strong at, at the moment when you decide to pull the plug. Uh, so we have a little break for uh, weather. Uh, anything people have learned over the years of, of how much time do you have uh, uh, and other issues that you've learned about whether your favorite app or whatever. And uh, I'm getting a lot of response here tonight. Uh, I used to use the rule of thumb that from the time you heard, if you could hear the thunder, uh, you were 30 minutes out from the, 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 the storm actually arriving in your, your position if it's, if it's heading your way. Um, and most of the storms that, that uh, do affect our racing area um, are channeled right down the uh, Severn River, uh, frequently coming down and once they once they get on that racetrack, they move pretty fast. We need to make sure as a, as a club that all the boats that go out um, uh, come back safely. Obviously, a very obvious uh, uh, statement. Um, and so the race committee PRO needs to make sure that one, at least one boat is designated to shadow the, the fleet in, um, whether it's light air or, or that you're sending them in or, or really heavy air. If it's really heavy air, you might wanna keep more than one boat out. Uh, and we need to offer, especially in low, low wind situations to tow uh, boats um, it's pretty obvious and we do that a lot at SSA. There, there will be some boats that say, I, I, don't, I don't need a tow. Uh, so it's important that you approach uh, all the boats as you're, you're coming in with your, your tow or whatever you're doing and, and make sure that they know that you're offering a tow. If they say, no, I wanna stay out, I wanna sail in, uh, whatever the situation is, uh, please record their sail number and the skipper's uh, name of the boat who said, I, I'm fine, I'm going to go in. 
Uh, we cannot force uh, people to go in. We can't force them to take a toe, uh, but we do need to account for them uh, and, and know that, you know, that, that this, these boats were contacted on the water. They refused uh, uh, tow or assistance and said that they did not want to come in. Uh, so at least we know uh, which boats are out on the water, uh, but have decided not to come in. For some events, we, we now have this uh, check-in, check-out hangar board. Uh, the lasers have been using this uh, for, the, for their winter. Uh, a, a particular regatta, right now in our SI, the, these, this uh, check-in, check-out board is not part of our uh, sailing instructions. However, for larger events uh, and events uh, in the edges of this, uh, the season and smaller boats that are more susceptible to capsizing, <clears throat> the, the fleets may choose to use this system. Uh, that requires a, uh, uh, a change to the sailing instruction. Uh, once you decide you're going to do this, you need to make sure it's part of the, the requirements. Uh, and that can be done with a, uh, a, a notice on the notice board to change the sailing instructions uh, and make sure you've met all the requirements uh, for posting it uh, sufficiently early enough uh, in, uh, as stated in the sailing instructions and in the racing rules. Uh, the in-out hangar board is located uh, between the, the bathrooms. Uh, if you're going to use this uh, system, uh, you should post a list of competitors by, by the board uh, so you know uh, who, who all these different boat numbers are uh, in the event that you've got to start tracking somebody down. The uh, one of the things you, you're, gonna, you're gonna be seeing things on the water uh, that you may consider to be rules violation, a boat hitting a mark and not uh, turning, uh, doing their turns, um, a, uh, an, an infraction that you might consider that person uh, broke a rule but nobody protested them. Uh, the important thing is uh, that you do not tell the competitor on the water that they broke a rule. Uh, if you're the mark boat, uh, or on the signal boat, wherever, if you see this, you should communicate that information to the PRO uh, and do that by cell phone. Uh, competitors uh, uh, do monitor the radio channel, even the uh, back channel, uh, and describe the incident uh, with the sail numbers, uh, whatever it is that, that you know. The PRO will then decide whether they want to uh, file a protest from uh, the race committee, which they're entitled to do. Uh, it's very rare, uh, but the PRO should make that decision. And the, um, uh, the rules, basically 661.1b say that the, if you're going to inform a competitor that, there is, that they, they had a foul on the water, you do it after the racing is finished. Uh, in, and it can be up to the end of the protest period um, after everybody gets back to the dock. Uh, so uh, that, that is the time that we inform competitors uh, that we observed um, a, an infraction on the water, but we don't do it on the water during the race. And the rule 61.1 is pretty clear uh, as to what the action should be. Finally, at the end of the, the day, um, if you have an incident on the water in which there, there was damage um, uh, um, or injury um, uh, su sufficient that it comes to your attention, uh, you should, the PRO should file uh, an accident incident report uh, Though this report form is in the uh, race committee office, and uh, that that has spaces for all the the information that you will need to record the, the specifics of the event. Uh, if if the 
uh, particularly if if the if there's an injury and a person is is uh, taken to the hospital either by their crew or the EMT, uh, this becomes really important for us to record as much information about that incident uh, that we can. Uh, typically, by the time you get to this point, uh, you should um, at, at the, the best the earliest. Uh, time possible to uh, notify the Commodore or another board member uh, of these serious events. Uh, basically, either when you're on the water or shortly after you come in, as soon as you realize you have an incident that uh, may produce some liability uh, to the club, uh, the, um, the, a board officer should be informed. You may, you may not be able to get a hold of the Commodore uh but they, sh they should be informed so that they, they are aware and whether they need to come down to the club um, uh, if there are any any decisions that need to be made that affect the liability of the club that should be done by a, a board member uh, and they, they need to know what's going on as quickly as possible so that's the end of uh when things go wrong uh uh, we, we need you uh, uh, to be out on the water having fun like Jeff here, who made the cover of Spin Sheet. Uh, uh, but uh, we also need to be safe. Uh, we need to act uh, in a responsible uh, manner for both the, the boats, uh, our club boats that are out on the water, and the fact that we are a, a, a pretty well trained asset out on the water for other people who may be uh, getting into trouble. Um, one of the things that I heard this year, uh, just recently, was that the sale of small boats in the United States has gone up really dramatically as a result of the pandemic. Uh, what that says to me is we're going to have a lot of people out on the water this year who absolutely don't know what they're doing, uh, and they're going to get in trouble uh, really fast. Uh, and so keep your eyes open. Uh, and. and you know, watch out for what's happening with the, these people as they're they're out on the water. You're going to see some pretty crazy stuff uh, this year. So uh, this is the last of the four units. Um, if you um, did not get to see, uh, particularly uh, unit two and unit three, uh, you the, 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 these uh, units will all be put up um, on the website uh, uh, as a, um, uh, uh, so I, I think we may, it'll be like a YouTube thing. We're still working that out. Uh, if you're new to the, the club, uh, we really encourage you to look at unit one, which is the basic introduction to what you might expect on the race committee. And if you're a powerboat driver, um, DRO or PRO, uh, we need you to attend Unit 5, which uh, is being put, still put together on powerboats, uh, meaning the, the, the club assets uh, that, that we uh, expect members to, to use. Um, and there will be a special uh, class uh, just, just for those considerations. On, on managing um, our, our boats. And I think that's the end. So we have uh, uh, time for, for questions, uh, uh, discussion, um, uh, or whatever. So the floor is open. Oh, yeah. There. yeah, I have a question, Jim. Yep. Uh, in the beginning of the presentation, it was a picture of a powerboat on top of a sailboat. Yeah. Was that one of the SSA boats? Uh, no, that was not. That was uh, a J-105 being hit by a chartered, uh, a, a licensed captain charter boat. And I never did hear exactly what the captain of that boat was doing, but he, he, he ran right through that boat. Fortunately, yeah, pretty fast. Wow. No, no one was hurt. And I think it was not last year. It was two summers ago. Uh, wow. Real crazy accident. And, and it, I never heard what, what the outcome is, but I bet you some money was changed hand on, on that one. Yeah.
We got a, uh, a video from uh, Bill Cabral that it was about uh, hypothermia and there was a course they give on uh, how to survive hypothermia. It was really excellent. I don't know if you've seen that or if you'd wanna maybe even show some of the people at the club, but uh, I'll try to get that to you. And can you send me the link on that? That would be a good thing to, to post yeah. on, our, on our website. Hypothermia is a really funny thing to deal with because uh, very impressive video. Yeah, you know, the, the person who's who's becoming hypothermic really loses their ability to make rational decisions, and sometimes you know, you may you may not at first observe, you know think they're as bad as they are, but they get they get into a tough shape really fast, and. Uh, after a heart attack, my understanding is this is the you know one where you have very little time to to get um, get them starting to warm up, and after they reach a certain body temperature, you 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 can't they, they don't have the ability to warm themselves up no matter how many blankets you throw over them, um, and you may have to actually get some people hugging them um, to provide, uh, but, but there's a whole, that's a whole process of dealing with hypothermia, which, uh, uh, it, it, again, would, would be covered in a good first aid course. Okay. Well, um, any last minute, uh, see <clears throat> um, Jim, this is Charlie Kraft. You know, so one of the things since, you know, as PRR, you end up only doing it once or maybe twice a year. And, um, you know, when these events occur, we usually don't hear about them until after the fact and we don't get kind of the inside information. So, you know, if somehow that could get shared with the PROs, you know, the lessons learned kind of stuff so that we all kind of gain knowledge from, you know, what people did in situations to kind of, you know, help them along. I think that would help all of us as a, as a community, you know, as a community of race officials. Well, we probably could have a whole program just on the one laser event from three years ago uh, that uh, a very complex um, uh, set of circumstances you know, getting to the point where we had a problem and extracting ourselves from it once we had it. Um, and uh, the, the short answer to that was that uh, we should have pulled the plug off earlier than we did um, in terms of getting boats off the water. Um, but that was a full mobilization of every uh, rescue asset in town. Um, and uh, uh, I, I think that a lot of that information did, did come out, uh, but I don't know where, it, where it's residing. I mean, you know, there are instances where like where soulings have sunk, I guess, you know, for, mm -hmm. for a, a dinghy sailor, that's not something we encounter. So hearing, you know, what, what, remedy you can do when you have a sinking keel boat. I mean, that sort of stuff would be useful, I think. Yeah, I, I was involved in a rescue um, of P Peter Tossi's light or, or his comet uh, that took about two hours uh, of me being in the water. We couldn't get the boat to, it didn't have any kind of self flotation and just keeping it upright by moving my weight around in this fully submerged boat as it was slowly towed to SSA and keeping it from capsizing it uh, uh, again and again. Um, but, uh, you know, I, we, we sailed by Peter as he capsized. Um, he was in the water with his crew. Um, and I, I looked and I know Peter for a long time. I said, Pete, Peter, are you all right? And he said, no. And we immediately took our spinnaker down, turned around and started this very long, process of uh, getting his uh, young uh, crewmen out of the water, then getting Peter out of the water, and trying to figure out how to get his beautiful comet back to SSA in one piece. Hi, Charlie. Um, Barbara does the PRO and DRO comments and is connected with them. She might be a good person to ask that question to, to supply that information to you. I think it, it's a great idea. Okay, well, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll bring that up at our, our next Standing Race Committee uh, uh, meeting, which I think is next week or whatever. Okay, well, I'm going to uh, 
uh, end this at this point and uh, thank you all for, for coming and uh, please thank encourage, you, encourage Thanks, you. Jen. Uh, 